What's going on guys? Welcome to your 46th HTML5 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to be finishing up the program by first coding the start drag function. Now the start drag function is basically the function that's going to get fired off as soon as the user starts to drag their image. So let's go ahead and code that right now by using function start drag and we're going to be passing it in whoa not a capital E Haas a lowercase e. Now I know I talked to you guys about events before but let me expand on this a little bit so this e parameter that I keep passing in our functions it doesn't just you know represent some cool letter that we want to throw around it's actually short for event now what is an event an event is something that the user can do on your web page for example they can drag this image so dragging is an event they might be able to move their mouse around so mouse move is an event there are a bunch of these events that are built into JavaScript now why did they build these events in kinda useless right not exactly whenever an event occurs a user event your browser is gonna store information alongside that event for example whenever the user moves their mouse over here it's gonna store the information of the X position and Y position of the mouse and basically every event that happens it stores some little bit of information alongside that event why do we need to know this because we need to store some information with our dropping and dragging event so that's why I'm telling you guys that so we're gonna be doing that later on but first we need to worry about this how exactly is this program gonna work well we know that whenever we drag this picture over here then we want to drop it and change this text into this picture so how would we do that well if we look in our HTML in order to get an image to appear we need this source code right here now the text is all this that's what we don't want so in order to change it we're gonna need to reference this source code and we're gonna need to basically change what's inside here later on so the first thing we need is a reference to this source code so let me just go ahead and copy this copy it and let's make a variable called code and let's set it equal to that source code now another thing I want to point out is whenever you make a variable in JavaScript you can put it in between double or single quotation marks always put HTML inside single quotation marks because whenever you have an attribute like ID or source it's always surrounded by double quotation marks so without having the need for escaping it just surrounded by single quotation marks it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier so now that we have a reference to this image stored in the variable code what we need to do is we need to say okay event Bucky just told me that you can store some information inside your event so why don't you go ahead and prove that to me right now well whenever you have an event and you want to store information inside it you need to call something called data transfer and you need to call a function called set data so set data is basically saying okay store information on this event well the first parameter we say okay we just want to store text information nothing special and now we need to write what information do we want to store well since we want to store the image we store that in a nice little variable called code so now whenever the event of start to drag occurs basically whenever we start to drag this image it's gonna store the information of this source code so we're gonna need that later on so just remember whenever we start to drag this an event is gonna occur and it's gonna store the information of the source code for the picture so now the only other function that we need to make is this dropped so this basically occurs whenever you drop something and release it like that whenever you drop it down in an area this is what you want to occur so make function and it's called dropped and of course this is gonna take the same E parameter so remember I told you guys that each browser has a default action that occurs whenever you drag basically every event a browser has a default action for it so even though Chrome might not do anything whenever you drop something maybe Firefox plays a little chime maybe Internet Explorer pops up an alert box we don't want any of that crap to happen so what we need to do is we need to prevent any default action that the browser might do automatically and we do that through E which is the action or event prevent default this makes sure that 
no matter what browser you're viewing this web page on, nothing is going to happen. And we don't want anything to happen because we want to write our custom code on this line right here, so we don't want any default crap to happen automatically. So remember, what we need to do is we basically need to take this text and change it into this image right here. So in order to do that, we need to replace this text right here with this code right there. So how do we access this text inside the HTML? Well, what we need to do is we need to reference it through leftbox, and there's a property in JavaScript called inner HTML, and that basically says, okay, whatever is inside these tags right here, that's what property I'm referring to. So we already referenced leftbox through that little variable right there, and the property to reference the inner HTML or the inner code of that is inner HTML, if you kind of guess that. So basically what we're referencing through this property is all the stuff inside this box, which happens to be the text, I dare you to drag an image in me. Now what we can do in order to change this into the image, we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it down here. But since we stored the information alongside that event, I'm showing you the proper way to do it. What you need to do is you need to actually grab, it looks a lot like this, but instead of instead of setting the information, we already set the information that we want to store that event. So what we need to do is we just need to get it now. So the method for that, in case you couldn't guess, is get data. Basically get the information that we stored with that event, which was basically this right here. So get data takes one parameter. It's basically what type of data do you want to get? plain old text and the reason you need to put this is kind of weird but you can store and receive data in different types of ways there's text and then there's URL and there's a bunch of different ways but the majority of the time you just want to receive plain old text data so basically what we're saying is this event is going to store this right here so basically whenever we get the information we're getting the code for the image so whenever we change the HTML, which is right here, into the source code for the image, which is right here, it's basically going to make the image appear on the left-hand side. Don't believe me? Well, let me just go ahead and save this, and hopefully I didn't mess anything up since I just talked a little bit of crap there. Now we're going to go ahead and drag it over into the left box, release, and check it out. Now what happens is our left box displays this image right like that. So again, one last time, what we're doing is whenever we start to drag this image, let's refresh it and start to drag. As soon as we start to drag it, it's going to store the information of the image path inside that event. So right now, the information is stored inside the event of the image. So now whenever we release it, we're saying, okay, instead of having text in there, change the inner HTML to the information that we gave you, which was the image path. And there you go, there is a very basic tutorial of how to drag and drop images. Again, a couple things you can do to make this cooler is if you wanted to, whenever you dragged over this, you might want to change the border to a different color or the background to a different color. Or, I don't know, maybe you want to, whenever you drag this, you just want to have one image here and make this one disappear. You can do all of that, and maybe I'll teach that to you guys in the next tutorial if I got time. But um, those are all different things that you can do using this drag and drop feature in HTML5. So again, as we can begin to see, websites are going to start turning more from just displaying plain old basic information to make the internet more interactive, giving it the feel of a software desktop application. I'm super excited. I cannot wait for it. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.